okay. How are you? Uh, I'm having a grumpy day. What about you? Uh, I'm okay. I got back from New Jersey about three hours ago. Yes, you're because she's mad at me because I was gone for four days. And your house. And there were strangers in this room, so. There's so much less stuff there now. Yes, because I took it all to New Jersey. You're moving. You're, next next week, are you going to be there for all two weeks? Stuff? Two weeks. My official moving date is March 1st. So starting in March, I will be coming to you from the scenic garden state. Why is my camera not working? You can't see me. So you get two more weeks with Miss Bridget, and then you'll all meet Miss Miracle. Uh, who is deaf, and so always meow is at top volume, which should be fun. <laughs> So we'll be in the middle of the show and it's all of a sudden. Rawr! Exactly. Why you, you, why is my camera not working? Son of a bitch. You look like you're on the stream. That's, That's my TARDIS. Let's see. Now open camera. It's not oh there we go. Now there we go. Is Darth Vader there? No. Now you should be able to see me. There we go. Hey. Oh, hi. Nice. I have two cameras. I have one for the show and one so that people who are on the video thing can see me. That was not Darth Vader. That was my TARDIS noise. What? Hmm? I get a private show. Yes. Which is the exact same thing everyone else is seeing. It's just... I have a cool... Well, sometimes I get a cool Dutch angle, though. Well, I fixed that, didn't I? Yes, today you're very straight. Some days he's not so straight. See, I don't know if we're going to see Bridget today because she's a little mad at me for not being home and strangers stayed in my room. So she's all grumpy and shit? She's a little out of sorts, yeah. Like when I first came in, she was like, hi, Billy Rose. And then she was like, oh yeah, by the way, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, service me and then leave me. Kind of, yeah. Oh, okay. So tonight, obviously being just after Valentine's Day and after that horrible fucking movie... We have news related to that horrible fucking movie. I'm kind of wondering if we're going to... Do we have a lot of stories about people injuring themselves? Because they didn't do the reading and... Each week, Catherine goes out onto the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And... Yeah, so, yeah. Next week we should have good stories, too, because tomorrow's Mardi Gras. So, yeah. Yeah, the horrible fucking movie. It's the gift that could that just keeps on fucking giving. Sex toys inju injuries have spiked since Fifty Shades was published. Because of course they have. And I love the picture here. I don't know what the fuck is going on with this picture on this story. I know what the thing in the middle is. And I know what the things around it are. I just don't understand how they're related. Well, they are the same shape. Ish. I guess that's what they were going for. Ish. Much ink has been spilt over Christian and Anna wannabes engaging in BDSM-inspired sex without proper education. Now it appears that ill-informed bondage isn't the only sexual consequence of Fifty Shades of Grey's popularity. For the past eight years, hospital visits necessitated by sex toy industries have about doubled. The Washington Post reports um, the uh, Consumer Product Safety Commission collects anonymized data on ER visits and what causes them. The focus on injuries caused by consumer products, including, quote, massage devices and vibrators. Sex toys fall in that category, but so do things like massage chairs and back scratchers. The Post discarded 20% of the vibrator mass massage vibrator injuries caused by non-sex toys and looked specifically at the bedroom mishaps. So what happens when playtime goes wrong? Since 2005, 83% of sex toy injuries that have required hospital visits have also required foreign body removals of the patients admitted for sex toy industries. 58% are males with a median age of 44. Median age of women, females admitted of these injuries is 30. The oldest women treated in ER for a sex toy injury was 67. 
the oldest man was 85. Well, all right. I don't understand how this happens. If Me either! If you're using a thing that's made for that purpose, how do you get it stuck? How did that happen? I just... I mean, fine, if you're using a fucking cucumber, it's going to snap in half and you're going to be really unhappy. If you're using hot dogs, if you're using pretty much any food stuff, don't put food stuff... Oh, hi! Hi! <laughs> but if you're using something made for that purpose... How does this happen? Do you I just don't, shove it in too far? I don't know. I really, you know, it, it's, you just, you use lube, you follow the directions, you're fine. These are designed for this purpose. The directions need to be on a vibrator, for God's sake. <laughs> Hi, baby. Are you still mad at me? Say hi to the people. Slot A, tab B, that sort of thing. Do we really need, like... Have you ever seen the instructions on like a Nintendo Wii or something or, or uh, a 3DS? They, they have all these little pictograms showing you how to use it properly, the direction, the hold it this distance from your face, adjust the, the 3D and whatnot. All these little pic. Do we need little picture instructions on Maybe. sex toys? Maybe. Get out of the Oreos. You can't have them. <laughs> um. Maybe we do. You know, I saw, and I almost bought it as a gag gift for Dan for Valentine's Day. They now have 50, 50 Shades of Grey branded sex toys. You know this, right? There's a whole line. Oh, yeah. You go somewhere and you can get like 50 Shades branded cock rings and vibrators and anal balls because that's a thing that happens in the book. <laughs> but they have 50 Shades of Grey branded erection cream. Are you familiar with the concept of erection cream? Yes. This is a totally fake thing. No, it doesn't. It, it does doesn't not work. work. But they sell. It's pretty much, I think, like some kind of numbing agent. Which, wouldn't you think that would be, you know, the opposite? I, I don't know. But you're supposed you... to rub it on your dick and whatever. And it was Fifty Shades of Grey branded, and I was standing there in the Spencer Gifts seriously going... Would he laugh or send me home? Like, how bad of a joke is this exactly? Because that's a fine line. So I didn't buy it. And then I told him later, and he's like, that would have been hilarious. And I'm like, damn it. Tully said, what if they use Ikea directions for sex toys? <laughs> the little weirdly shaped dude? Have you ever, seen, you ever put together Ikea furniture? I don't put things together. That's what men are for. <laughs> it's something they I don't lift things. I don't open jars and I don't put together furniture. It's something called an exploded view. Do you know what that is? You don't know what that is. Yes, because I saw Iron Man. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, they, they do that and they show you where all the parts are supposed to go. I don't imagine that for sex toys. You know I'm going to get yelled at by that for that that's what men are for comment, right? Yeah, of course you are. Whatever. The comment section of the video when it goes up is going to be like, oh my god, Tara's so sexist. I'm never watching this show again because people don't understand sarcasm. Hey, you know what? That's why I don't read them. Um, I'm racist against white people. But I don't read them. My life is happier that way. No, I read them because they're hilarious. Oh, so once again, we're having... What is it with chimneys these days? What is it with pygmies these days? Chimneys. Oh. <laughs> I thought you said pygmies, and I'm like, is there a problem with pygmies? We've never done a pygmy story, story Tara. We've done chimney stories. Yes. Do what we is... have a pygmy in a chimney? I'm getting off track. What, why, why do we... Why the fuck does this... Why?! That's what I want to know. Arizona teen gets locked out of house, gets stuck in chimney. Tucson, Arizona. Firefighters rescued a teenage boy who was stuck in a chimney at a Tucson home. Um, the teen was covered in soot but unharmed and didn't require any medical attention. Fire officials say the teen was locked out of his house with his younger brother Dude, and trying to find a way in. I know! Look at that! Looks like something out of a horror movie. Have you ever been locked out? I've been you you were locked out the other day, weren't you? I was locked out a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, because at this house we get come in and out through the garage and the garage door keypad froze. 
because it was fucking cold as shit. Because it's like two degrees out. Yeah. And I couldn't get in. And luckily, I was able to go to a hotel for the night and just had to deal with a very angry cat the next morning because she didn't get fed. But you didn't think to yourself, you know what? Chimney. No. That that my first thought would be, I will call a locksmith. I will go to that a was na- that was my measure of last resort was maybe I'll have to bust up and pay for a locksmith right. to bring me in. But then I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to the Holiday Inn. Or or I'd have to call go to the neighbor's house, call my parents because he's 16. Call my parents, something like that. No Break window. <clears throat> no, his plan was, I'm gonna crawl down a chimney. Like, how do you not think to break a window before you crawl in the chimney? Yeah, I know. What what are they going to be more pissed about? That you broke a window or that the fucking fire department had to haul your ass out the chimney? Because you went all Edgar Allan Poe and tried to build yourself into the wall. Don't do that. Imagine if no one had hurt his ass and they started a fire. That just... The place I'm moving to has an active fireplace with a real chimney, and I still will not do that if I get locked out. I will still not do that. Uh, Call my boyfriend and be like, hey, come rescue my ass. I will not crawl down the chimney. There's fire. Oh, there's fire down there. That's the point of a (laughs) chimney is there's fire down there. That's what it's for. It's for fire. I'm not going to go down the fire hole. I don't know why, but that sounded dirtier than it was. I don't know. I've I've never I've never slept with someone who I would regard as having a fire hole, Tara. That's <clears throat> that's probably a good thing. Yeah, that's 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 you know. Although you saying that you've clearly never been a redhead because the jokes we get, man. No, I've never been a redhead, Tara. Do you know how many times, if you're a redhead on a dating site, some asshole messages you to ask if the carpet matches the drapes? Every time. And you're like, well, thanks for ensuring you'll never find out. That's why don't you ask girls that. That's why you don't go on the dating sites. They're awful. Just, it's a, it's, the purpose of the dating sites is to get all the awful collected in one place so they'll leave everyone else alone. It doesn't work very well, but that's the idea. Uh, so they're still mad at me for saying I use men to build things it's a joke we tell jokes on the show I don't know if you guys are aware we do not very good ones holy shit but we do tell them (laughs) really So, I just totally ate it trying to jump up my chair. <laughs> so, what is all right? What is the absolute farthest length you've gone to to get out of a tick? Um, I I honestly just eat it and take the ticket. I've I had one I, once that I don't pull the crying thing or anything. I'm just like, yeah, I fucked up. I'm really sorry. And honestly, if you do that, they'll usually lessen the charge. I had one. The cop pissed me off so much. I went to court and I fought it. And his ass didn't show up, so I got out of the ticket. That's as far as I've gone. I've never invented someone before. However, man faked being his own twin brother. To try and delay court hearings, New Jersey cops say. Jersey! Authorities say a northern New Jersey man post- posed as his fictitious blind twin brother in a bid to delay court hearings on several mo- motor vehicle summons. Um, Alawale Agoro of Hackensack now faces charges of hindering a- apprehensions, false swearing, and resisting arrest. Uh, Agora received five summons during a July 31st traffic stop, but during the court, September court appearance, authorities say the 58-year-old Agoro claimed to be his twin brother, Tony. Suspicious of the claims, the officers who issued the ticket saw Agoro driving later that day and issued him three more tickets. Now, keep in mind, he'd come to the court building. 
pretending to be his blind twin brother. Why would his twin brother show up for his court deal? And then he drove home. Where Yeah, and how does the blind brother drive? Just, why would his brother show up for his court deal? This seems to me to be a little elaborate to get out of some tickets. Yeah. Because obviously what happened as a result was worse than getting the tickets. This is called compounding the error. Yes. And this is why I don't really I don't really try to get out of tickets because the more like the more you fuck with the cops, the more you're fucking yourself. So they pull me over. Do you know how fast you were going? I do, officer. If I have a good reason, I will tell them so. Like, once I got pulled over trying to get to my dad who's in the hospital, and I'm like, look, I'll tell you the truth. My dad's in the hospital. He's very sick. I'm trying to get there. He lets in the charge. He was like, all right, that's a good reason. I'll give you disobeying a traffic device instead of speeding. It's just, And I admit that that's partially because I'm a not an attractive white girl. And you get away with shit, but... It, Inventing a blind dude. That's, that's like that's that's just a, a ticket. That's the kind of shit you go to hell for, man. You're inventing a blind guy. And then as after you walked out of the courthouse, you're like, nailed it, and then just hop in the car <laughs> and drive away. They totally bought it. Now I'm gonna drive home. They have cameras there, you know. They know that you did that. <laughs> We have some more bad driving. Um, I guess we file this under the they fuck you at the drive through uh, one. I don't Okay, I understand that some people prefer to go and pick up their pizza if they order it. On, you know, they order. I've never understood this because they have the delivery. But yeah, some if people bring it to you. Why would you go get it? I don't understand. This. Some people bring it to you. Some people will actually go to the store. Well, apparently Please come to you. Well, this is this is another strike against that whole going to the store bit. Um, New Rochelle. Oh, that's kind of where I live now. Uh, wrong toppings. Car crashes into Pizza Hut. New Rochelle police arrested a woman on Sunday, and the, the first line is maybe she didn't like pepperoni. <laughs> Alex Taylor of the uh, Journal News. You're on notice. That was that was that wasn't even funny. That wasn't even funny. That wasn't even good. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna do a sad trombone opening joke like that, at least make it decent. That wasn't funny. New Rochelle police arrested a woman Sunday afternoon after she crashed her car into the Pizza Hut. Let me probably make the photo bigger there. There you go. Smashed it into the front doors of the Pizza Hut. Customer was alone in her Volkswagen Jetta when she backed into the front door and cracked the glass. She drove from the scene, but was located and stopped. Manager for the restaurant declined co uh, comment. Customers leaving the pizza purveyor Sunday offered differing reports on what upset the woman. Uh, I read a separate article about this that said because she, she ordered, went to pick it up, her order at the store was wrong. And she got so mad, she backed her car into the Pizza Hut. Well, we do know that pizza shops are car magnets. Cars love pizza. We've covered this before. <laughs> this is some supernatural X-Files shit. Cars have a magnetic, desperate need for pizza. And so they just drive into the pizza place. Uh... That said, if you're Pizza Hut, you probably shouldn't expect exemplary service because no. it's Pizza Hut. No. It is Pizza Hut. No. Like, I go to the McDonald's drive through a lot. Sometimes they're fantastic. Sometimes they're like, here's your food. And I'm like, you know what? You're probably making $9 an hour. I'm not going to give you shit about it. You have a nice day. The, the, the yum brands, which is just the biggest lie ever. But of all the fun, she was there at the Pizza Hut. They could have been like, we'll make you a new one. But no. Yeah. Your response was to drive your car how is this going to facilitate the pizza in any way, shape, form possible? It's like the guy that pulled a gun to get 
hot fries at McDonald's. Like, what you can do is just walk up, no gun, yeah. and say, you know, my fries are cold. And because we live in a customer service driven country, they'll be like, oh, we'll give you hot fries. Okay, Gallo. You can just walk into Pizza Hut on your two legs without the car and be like, hey, my pizza's wrong. And they'll be like, gosh, that sucks. We're very sorry. Here's another pizza. Galileo 908. I crashed my car. I crashed my car in the combination Taco Bell and Pizza Hut. That's very, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. But we all know that the real thing that's going on here is that cars can't resist the siren call of pizza. That that is it, of course. Yes, cars will. You you can you can tow a car just by holding a pizza in front of you. The car will. That's that's a tip, you guys. Next time your car breaks down, don't call AAA. Just get a pizza. Just get a pizza. You... And hold it in front of the car. And, and the car will drive itself home. Yep. Next go. time you're drunk, don't drive. Just get a pizza and a fishing pole and a friend. <laughs> and leave your car home. Speaking of driving drunk. Oh, my. Speaking of driving I want to see somebody try that. With the pizza, with the, the fishing pole and the pizza? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of driving drunk, I have seen drunk drivers go to some ridiculous lengths to try to avoid getting in trouble for the drunk driving. This one, they actually made it worse. Sparta police, drunk drivers iced intersection. Two men were charged with driving while intoxicated after one of them crashed his BMW and then returned with the other to pour water at the road and make it look like ice caused the accident. That's kind of brilliant. <laughs> it's not. That's awful. Yeah, but for drunk planning, <laughs> what was your best drunk plan? I, I don't. I, I've never for, really for had... Me, for hatching a diabolical plan while totally fucked up, that's pretty good. I've never really had... It's it. simple. It's believable. Uh, at 2.46 a.m. on Saturday, Officer C.J. Uh, Growerholz. Growerholz. Wow, that's a name. I am Officer Growerholz. You're pulled over. Was uh, patrolling uh, Woodport Road when he passed a man dressed in dark clothing walking the intersection. Uh, Growerholz, I love him, Growerholz, stopped in front of the BMW and approached the driver's side of the vehicle. The man in dark clothing had gotten in front of the passenger seat of the car that was being operated by Alex Jer. Oh my god, Alexander Zemben. Oh, is this New Jersey too? Sparta. It might be. Alexander. I think it is. Zambanadetti. Wow, did I say it? I think I said it. Zambanadetti, also 20. Um, Zambanadetti. Despite the dangerous temperature, Zambanadetti was not wearing a t-shirt. It was one degree outside. He told police he had fallen down. The shirt had gotten wet on the backseat of the vehicle were two plastic five-gallon buckets with each one containing some water. What happened was the dude crashed his car went home, got water, came back, and poured it on the roadway to try and make it look like the ice had caused the car to crash, when in fact, he was drunk off his ass. I think I'm losing faith in their genius. Was this, were they the only car involved in the accident? Yes. So, if you were able to drive your car home... Yes. Why didn't you stay there? Yes! <laughs> If you were the only one involved in the accident, <laughs> fortune has smiled upon you, asshole drunk driver, because don't drive drunk or you're an asshole. And you didn't hurt anybody else. No harm, no foul. If you can drive your car home, just stay home. Police are not sure how many trips the men made to dump water on the roadway, but they do know the intersection would become dangerous to drive on because it was now covered with black ice. So when you could have just stayed home <laughs> and nobody would have given a fuck that you messed up your car except you. But no, now they've they've they put ice on the road and other people might be 
in danger from the fact these jackasses... I guess they felt inadequate because they, in their drunk driving, hadn't managed to hurt anybody. So they thought, well, we better do our due diligence and really endanger yeah. the public. For fuck's sake! I guess... No, they are awarded no points, and may God have mercy on their souls. He was, yeah, Briars was arrested at the scene and transported police headquarters for processing and breath testing. He was later charged with driving while intoxicated, try, uh, dry, uh, careless driving, failure to stop sign, stop the stop sign, leaving the scene of an accident, failure to report an accident, and disorderly conduct for creating a dangerous condition by purposefully icing the, the intersection. You made it worse! Once again, compounding the error. Our last one tonight is more drunkenness, but this one's kind of epic. And we got video. Woohoo! Where'd you wake up? She's sleeping. And this one comes to us from uh, Dublin. Hey! Flight to Dublin diverted to Denmark as man strips semi naked. Has to be subdued by other po passengers when he starts throwing punches. Wha just, just watch this guy. This guy's kind of epic. Here we go. There he is in the back of the plane. You just hear the Rocky theme playing in his head. Uh, right, our flight to Dublin is diverted to Denmark after a drunk man stripped semi-naked had to be tackled by fellow passengers after he started throwing punches. The fact that it's Ryanair explains a lot. Flight was on its way to Ireland from Riga in Latvia on uh, Tuesday morning, uh, Tuesday night, when the man removed his shirt and began flexing his muscles um, at the plane's rear. The plane was forced to make an unscheduled landing in Denmark, and the man was arrested. Uh, let's see what else is in this one. He was recorded, reported causing a disturbance and eventually subdued and tied up by other passengers. With what? That's a good question. <laughs> what did they tie him up with? Who was it? Wait, did somebody just get... We need to tie this guy up. My day has come. Hold on. <laughs> I've got stuff. It just so happens. It just so fucking I keep happens. bungee cords in my carry-on. And nobody has a problem with that. Oh, uh, the fact that it's Ryanair says a lot. This was the fucking airline that was trying to sell standing only space on airplanes. Yeah, yeah. And charge you to use the bathroom. But this guy, the, this guy is just work. I love how he's just fucking working it. He's too sexy for this flight. Too he's sexy just... for his shirt. Uh, it's like, he's like, Anticipating becoming the Hulk here with the flexing and posing and shit. There's stripper flights. What? Why aren't there stripper flights? Wait, what? Why aren't there flights with strippers on them? That would do amazing. Nobody likes air travel. It's miserable. You, put, you, you designate certain flights stripper flights, everybody's going to be happier. Would you like stripping or non stripping? I just, you just make travel a little less painful for everybody, I dude, think. Dude, if I'm on a plane, the last thing I want to do is start taking off my clothes. <laughs> the floor of a plane is a place I... I that is... In, remember when you were talking about all the shit they found on the subway? Yeah. Can you imagine the floor of a plane? They found the bubonic plague <laughs> on the New York City subway. How is that even possible? Time travel. But I, I just, I don't, I don't want, you don't want to have any, you don't want your, any of your skin to come in contact with some parts of the plane, okay? Well, you, planes are cleaned a little more carefully than the subway is. Still, I don't, I don't, because consider how long they have to clean the plane before the next people get on there. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to risk it. Well, you're not a professional. 
we just watched Showgirls yesterday. Why did you and do that? A, there, because it's a great movie. And there's this bit where Elizabeth Murphy like licks the stripper pole, and you're like, ah, no. Because it's obviously a really seedy, skanky strip club she works in, and you're like, like, you just got all of the diseases. There's a lot of really questionable labia I've been rubbing on that. It's like that's that's you just that's all of them in your mouth. At the same time. Yeah. They're actually having a fight to see who's going to infect you first. Like, every time I see that scene, I'm like, oh, Jesse Spano, don't do it. I've been very drunk before, and I've actually gotten a little drunk on planes, but I have never gotten so drunk on a plane. Because how fucking expensive is that? Try and think about how much they charge you. You know, I've never had an alcoholic drink on an airplane. It ain't cheap. I always just go, because I hate flying. I'm terrified of flying, and I get kind of airsick, so I just do my Dramamine and ginger ale and ride it out. That's because I figure I feel like if I added liquor, I would definitely vomit. Eh. So I just do Dramamine and ginger ale. But that shit, that it's not cheap to get drunk on a plane. That means this guy dropped I th- to get that drunk easily fifty bucks. Well, he could have been drinking. He could have pre-gamed at the airport or something. Yes. I'm going to fly now, so before I get on the plane, I'm getting lit up. Pe- a lot of people do that. You don't know people that do that? I know people that do that. Because you have to check in like two or three hours before your flight. Yeah, but I'm not getting lit up on... So they just hit the, the lounge and get tanked. Before that just th- that seems like the worst place to be drunk is in a, in a, is in a steel tube full of strangers. Yeah. And it's like, I don't drink on airplanes, like I've said, because it just seems like bad for business for someone like me. But, mm. but that just. Yeah, judge. And drunk and naked is no place to. <laughs> Son, drunk and naked, naked is no way to get through a plane. No. That's. that's... Then the snakes are going to get you. <laughs> Well, one snake might. He forgot about the snakes on the plane. So, yeah, I guess the first thing we learned this week is drinking and flying. Not a good mix. Well, not if you're the one flying the plane, no. Because you'll have... you'll if Passenger, I think it's okay. <laughs> well, no, because apparently you'll start having nom flashbacks or some shit. Level. But I wouldn't ban drinking and flying altogether unless you're the pilot. Well, I, I don't want to get... Drinking and flying apparently makes you think you're turning into the Hulk. Not everybody. Like, let's not be puritanical about this. What's worse, crying baby or drunken naked man? Crying baby. Really? Yeah. Cause because th- nobody is going to tackle and tie up that poor crying baby. And if they do, it's only going to get worse. There's no reasoning with a crying baby. They don't know any better. Yeah, but Once the crying... you tackle and tie up the drunken naked, it's going to stop. You tackle and tie up the drunken baby. <laughs> what? Crying baby. <laughs> Let's not even get into the drunken baby. <laughs> crying baby, they're just going to cry more because they don't understand why you have harmed them. Uh... Crying baby is worse. There's no solution. Their ears hurt and they don't understand why. We've learned that... In certain circumstances, if you've got a way scot free, take the win. Yes. Take the win. Don't you, you're don't overthink some because sh- sometimes you. Do over- not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Go straight to home. You're overthinking this shit. We've learned that you know there is really is no point for carry out when delivery is available because. Yeah. Oh, that. With crying baby, I can punish the parents. Why? The baby's crying because its ears hurt and it doesn't understand. The parents can't do anything either. Don't be a dick. We've learned that um, if don't compound the error, I think, is is because no. if you, a traffic ticket is one thing, making up a blind twin brother is some days of our lives shit. For a traffic ticket? I got the idea. 
Well, it wasn't me. It was my blind twin brother. Calculon, no. Um, we've learned that chimney is never a good option. Don't go down the fire hole. Don't go down the fire hole. Don't. That's not a good option. And everybody either. in the channel, stop being dicks about crying babies immediately. And finally, we've learned it's 2015 and people still have not figured out how to use a sex toy. And these have existed since medieval times. They used yeah. to have hand crank vibrators. Forgot, like but that sounds horribly uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, a medieval hand cranked vibrator. Have you never looked up like really ancient sex toys? Who are you talking to, Tara? They're, they're terrifying. They don't look fun. Looking and up some modern sex toys look pretty terrifying now that I think about it. Looking up medieval sex toys, not something I do with my downtime. But you should. 